Hi, I'm Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and I wanted to show you an alternative method for pasteurizing straw. In a previous video, I showed you how to heat straw in a hot water bath and pasteurize it using a propane burner and a 55 gallon drum. A lot of growers have had success using alternative methods. One of these methods is to simply use hydrated lime. The process is pretty straightforward. Basically, we're just gonna take a bunch of hydrated lime mix it in water in a 55 gallon drum and submerge the straw in there for 12 to 24 hours. When you take it out, the straw should be pasteurized and ready for you to add your mushroom spawn. So here's the straw that I'm gonna chop up and as you can see, it's already pretty clean straw. Of course, there's gonna be lots of contaminants and all sorts of other things in here that we can't see, but it's way better than starting off with wet or contaminated straw in the first place. So I have my 55 gallon barrel filling up with cold water right now. I'm gonna go ahead and chop the straw up into nice little bits. Believe it or not, the size of your straw and whether or not you chop it up can actually have a huge impact on the yield. Now there's lots of different types of lime out there and the type of lime you use is actually pretty important. You want to look for hydrated lime. Now this can typically be found at garden centers or agricultural supply stores. It increases the pH so high that the contamination within the straw is killed off. Yet the mycelium still has no problem working its way through the straw once it's drained. One thing you want to make sure is that the hydrated lime is low in magnesium. If it's too high in magnesium, it'll actually stop the mycelium from growing at all. Hydrated lime can be pretty irritating to your skin, to your eyes, and to your throat. At the very least, I definitely like to use nitrile gloves when I'm adding it to the water. And we're going to be using about 300 grams of hydrated lime for the 55 gallons of water. Okay, so my 55 gallon drum is pretty much full of water now. I'm just going to take the hydrated lime, just dump it right in there. I'm just going to mix it all around, trying to get a nice even mixture of the lime. So now all I'm going to do is take all this straw, put it into the barrel, and let it soak for about 12 to 24 hours. The straw has a tendency to float, so you want to put something heavy on top, just so that it keeps the straw submerged in the water. I like to use just a heavy cinder block to keep the straw down. And that's it. We're just going to wait for about 12 to 24 hours at the most and the straw should be fully pasteurized by tomorrow. Okay, so it's been about 18 hours now that the straw's been soaking in the lime water bath, so that means it should be fully pasteurized and ready for inoculation. So I've also built this simple little screen here that I use just to pack the straw into so it can drain, but you could just as easily put the straw on the ground and let it drain right on the ground. Pretty much all I'm going to do is stack layers of straw and spawn in these uh, bags of polytubing that I've tied off at the end there. So I'm going to use about 5 pounds of spawn per log and end up with a log that weighs about 25 to 30 pounds. First I want to make sure that the spawn's broken up really well. You can see it's really well consolidated down here so we want to break it up into individual kernels. You want to make sure as you're building your log, as you're stacking your layers, with every layer of straw, you want to make sure you pack it down really hard so that it fills in all the gaps and crevices in the polytubing. You always want to make sure that the last layer you put on is a layer of straw. That's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to tie this bag up, poke some holes for aeration, and let it sit and colonize for a week. So since the straw was still pretty wet when we made the log, you want to make sure you put some holes on the bottom of the log, just so it can drain over the next few days as it's colonizing. So that's it. Now I'm just going to take this log inside into a little bit of a cooler environment and let it colonize over the next seven days. By that time it should be fully colonized and I'm actually going to take it outside to fruit it. So I'm just going to leave the straw log here colonizing for about a week or so. As you can see there's a couple of dark spots kind of greenish spots on the log. That's not contamination at all, although it kind of looks like that way in the video. That's actually just uh, some leaves that uh, remained in the straw. I didn't get a chance to pick them out when I made the log. But that shouldn't affect the log uh, whatsoever. This is a blue oyster log that I inoculated exactly a week ago, and I prepared it using the exact same method of cold water pasteurization with lime. 
And as you can see, it's already almost completely colonized. There's a little spot down here, and a little spot up at the top there that's not colonized yet. But in a few more days, this thing should start pinning and should be ready to put outside and fruit. So we're just gonna leave these logs here to colonize. Probably in the next couple days, I'm gonna take the blue oyster log outside to fruit it. And in about a week or so, I'll come back and get the yellow oyster log to fruit it. Once you're sitting here colonizing, there's really nothing you have to do other than check it every couple days just to make sure it's not contaminating and that uh, the mycelium is growing as you'd expect. So it's been about four days now for the yellow oyster log and just a little over a week for the blue oyster log. Let's take a quick look and see how they're coming along. So here's the yellow oyster and it's kind of what you would expect from about four days uh, worth of colonizing. As you can see, um, the spawn is starting to work its way through the straw. Um, some places a little bit stronger than others. It doesn't always show up great in the video. Again, this isn't contamination, that's just a leaf that uh, happened to be in the straw when I packed the bag. Now here, if you look at the blue oyster log, this was made about 11 days ago. And as you can see, we got lots of pins. So we have some really nice clusters coming right through the bag, getting ready to fruit. And uh, you can see that some of them are drying out a little bit, but it's only about 57% you know, relative humidity in here, so definitely not high enough to really get these things to be fruiting properly. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, blue oyster log and fruit it outside. And we're going to wait probably another week or so for this yellow oyster log before it's ready to be put outside. Okay, so I got my two logs hanging now. As you can see, this one's about a week ahead, and there are just a ton of fruits on it. The cold water pasteurization is a pretty effective way to grow mushrooms, and it definitely didn't have a negative effect on the yield. In fact, I think it, it's probably even had a positive effect on the yield for these straw logs. You can see that the straw is supporting some really huge oyster clusters. So that's it, now I'm just going to wait a few more days until these mushrooms grow a little bit more and are ready for harvest, and they should be ready for the table. So thanks for watching, I'm Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.